Well, welcome to the show. I'm Brandon. I'm Corey, and this is Our View from the Bench. Welcome back, bench warmers. The NBA playoffs are moving along, and we're back to recap how well or poorly we did in the first round and cover our predictions for the second. There's been some crazy things happening, so let's jump right into it. I'm Corey, Coach Finch's second row seat. And I'm Brendan, SGA's one-sided trade, and this is RV from the Bench. Now, before we get started, if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss any one of our new episodes. And also, if you could please do us a favor, if you like what you see or hear, please don't forget to smash that like button. Smash it. Smash it. We appreciate it. It helps us out a lot more than you probably think. Before we do continue, I just want to say one of our previous videos, the MLB umpire one, did pretty well. So we appreciate you hitting that like button because it helps kind of send it around, at least well in our standards. So we like to see that somebody's watching. Appreciate all you who are. Thanks. All right, Corey. All right, man. So second round. Um, obviously, we're not in it, but I kind of saw that coming. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you kind of saw it coming, too. You are just giving us a little bit more of a fight than I did. Yeah. Uh, so let's jump. I was uh, picking a little more of my heart than my head at that point. <laughs> I don't blame you, dude. I was like thinking that way too, but I'm just an extremely pessimistic person when it comes to sports sometimes. Uh, sometimes I try to be optimistic, but sometimes I'm a little pessimistic. So I, that's what I was running with, unfortunately. Was the, yeah, uh, well, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. I was almost exactly right, but um, let's dive into the recap real quick. Let's just literally just run it down the line. Corey, give us who you had. And uh, what, what, what we'll do is after Corey or I say what we did, we'll have like a little icon that pops on the screen if we were right or if we were wrong. All right. Corey. So, whew, I, okay. I felt pretty good about a lot of these picks. Obviously, we talked about the Lakers one, maybe not so much. But if we're yeah. going in order here, uh, I had the Thunder in six over the uh, New Orleans Pelicans. I almost said Hornets. That was right. Wow. They've been there in a while. Um, and <laughs> then I had the Dallas Mavericks beating the Clippers in seven at staplecrypto.com arena, whatever you want to call it these days. <laughs> so I was right, but they won in six. Yeah, it wasn't right yeah. around the games, but good. Right uh, team, though. I had the Wolves actually beating the Suns in seven, but they kind of shocked me and did a little bit better than that. Okay, so you got three, right? And then for the last one in the West, obviously I had the Nuggets in seven and hoping the Lakers would do better, but ultimately that did not happen. Gentlemen's sweep is how it ends. So you got all four right in the West. Just games were off. That's not bad. That's pretty good. I'll take it. I, I wish somebody yeah. would have paid me for it, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Okay. East. All right. So Eastern Conference, I had Celtics in five over Miami. Which, exact. Yeah, well, Miami was you know not really themselves with no Butler either. So um, second round, the second matchup is I had the Cavaliers over the Magic in five. Okay. Took them a little longer, but you're still right about the team. Yeah, home teams took advantage of every game in that series. Yikes. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, true. That's so funny. And then uh, I had the Bucks and seven of the Pacers. I thought the experience <clears throat> and veteranness of the Bucks would take advantage, but when two of the veterans aren't really playing in most of the series, I guess it's kind of hard to expect that to happen. True. Yeah. Okay. So you got one wrong there. And lastly, I had the Knicks in five, which... Again, wrong amount of games, but right close at enough. So I'll take I'll take seven out of eight. That's so you look at one wrong. You got one out of the eight wrong. That's pretty good. Not bad. And you guess the Celtics was the Celtics one the only yeah the Celtics one was the only one on the exact games, but that's not bad. Yeah. Other than that, you're only off like one or two. That's not bad. Not yeah. bad. Good job. I'm an I'm a I'm an NBA expert. That's what they call me. That's, I'm just saying, bro. That's just saying. You heard it here first, guys. Whatever you want your picks to be, again, we're maybe a little bit off on the uh, on the uh, Bucks, but that we also didn't. We knew that Giannis was limping. Yeah. All of a sudden, Dame and Giannis are sitting multiple games. Okay, now nah, yeah, it's yeah. kind of hard to be right about that. Kind one, of a so. really weird situation in Milwaukee going to the offseason too. I don't know what the hell they're gonna do. So no, seriously, yeah, or Phoenix, bro. Yeah, that, that one's that one's nuts. even worse because they're gonna be way over the apron. Ugh, mess. When the season's over, we're gonna do like a post mortem, at least for like a handful of teams. We're not gonna do all thirty because we yeah. just have the time and have hand, frankly don't care. Yeah. Um, so we'll do like maybe a post mortem. We'll do an episode or two on each team and see if we could get the. What we would do, maybe, and see if uh, see how white we could be. Sounds good. So. All right. Well, now let's see how you did, sir. Okay. All right. I don't think I did as well, um, but it's weird because the one that you got wrong is actually one of the ones that I saw somehow. So. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's run it down the line. Thunder, I called in six. Okay. Thumbs up, but a sweep. So a little bit wrong. This is the one where I was like, I think I was trying to jinx it. That's my guess. I was out trying to jinx it. I said Clippers were going to win in seven because I did think it was a little bit closer, and I didn't think Kawhi was going to miss all these games. But True. it was actually the games that he missed were the games that they won, besides at the end, obviously. Yep. The two games that he played in are the two games that they lost. So uh, 
I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Um, so that one was wrong. Wolves in seven. That was a sweep. So right team, wrong number. Wrong game. And then I had the Nuggets sweeping because I had absolutely zero faith in my Lakers, but they pulled one off out of their ass. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen sweep is, I guess, a yeah. little bit better. It's an improvement from last year. You get swept, and then you get lost in five. So maybe next year, yeah. six if we see Denver. Well, <laughs> exactly. We'll get we'll get into that in a moment because I got something to say about how those Nuggets are handling the uh, us now. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was the West. So I got three right. I got one wrong. Obviously, I had the Mavs. I wanted the Mavs. Dude, I really did think the Mavs were going to win. I think it was just my jinx. I think that's hey, why I was putting it out there. It worked, so good job. It worked. <laughs> yeah. Too bad. I, the only one I know it's not going to work is this next one. Uh, I had Celtics in five. That is a, exactly what happened. As much as I'd love to have picked the Heat. Yeah. It wasn't happening. So uh, I had Cavs in six. They pushed it to seven. I thought they might be able to kind of close it out on Orlando. Younger team, first time in the playoffs for pretty much mostly everybody there. Yeah. Uh, but they weren't able to do that. They, they forced a game seven. The only one to go seven, actually. So that was kind of crazy. Good point. This is the one I did get right, actually. Pacers in six. Um, that was spot on, actually. The only one that I got right. And I got another one wrong. I said the Sixers would finish in six. I, I just thought Embiid was a little bit healthier than he was. He was literally in a wheelchair. Yeah. Totally. So uh, it was not great. Not great. But it's, so. it's the problem when big guys get ankle and knee injuries. Like, they're never going to be able to, like, really fully be themselves again. And it would be... It literally happened again with uh, Embiid in the series. Yeah, yeah. So, so shout out to the teams that all moved on. Uh, all of them except the Celtics, of course. No <laughs> shout outs for you. We're gonna move into the round two predictions, though. So Corey was seven of eight. I was six of eight, and we each had one exact by the games as well. So let's see who can get the most points. Maybe I can get all four, and you can get one wrong here, and we'll be tied back up. There we go. All right, let's keep track. All right, so since I went last, obviously, let's have you go first and kick off who you have as your round two predictions. Let's do this, though. Let's right. do uh, one by one. Like, you go, then I go, then you go, then I go. We'll do, right. That way we talk about the same games gotcha. or okay. series. Yeah. I'm in. So you got Knicks so Pacers. In the first one, I, I went back and forth of how many games. I didn't necessarily think that the Knicks wouldn't win the series. I had them winning the series all the time. But Indiana scores a lot of points. So, yeah. Then I think about it, but Thibodeau and the Knicks, like that's their whole thing is they play defense. So right. then you look at game one tonight, Indiana still scored 117, but lost. So I have the Knicks in six. I feel like they just, they won on the road in Philly in last series, and now they're going to use that to their advantage moving forward. And I think Thibodeau and them are going to be ready. I don't know if they're going to get all the way to the finals yet. I don't know if I feel that, but I definitely feel them getting to the Eastern Conference finals and getting over the Pacers in six. Which is crazy to think about. Okay, so in six, you said too. Uh, I was going to say it's crazy to think about because it, Really, if you look at that team, especially in this day and age of the NBA, this era, it's the superstar era. And that's not even trying to be a knock at Jalen Brunson. But let's just say – let's just even consider him one. Well, who else on that team is a superstar? Yeah, well, they just have one. Yeah. That's... And he's the shortest guy on the team. Yeah, true. <laughs> Good point. Kind of like AI back in the day, like the best yeah, player, so, smallest player. So props – yeah, exactly. So props to, props to Jalen Brunson. I know not a lot of people give him freaking props, but he definitely deserves it. Props to Jalen. He's carrying this team. Granted, team effort. Every, this whole team's playing lights out right now. DiVincenzo, the Nova guy's got everything going. I feel like you have to go to Villanova in order to play for the Knicks <laughs> nowadays, to be honest with you. So good for them. Good for the Nova guys reuniting. Josh Hart, DiVincenzo, and Jalen Brunson are, are killing it. Uh, but I, I do have the Knicks as well. I, I'm with you. I don't know how far they go, and we'll get to you know Eastern Conference predictions, and hopefully they'll be in there, and we'll be right about this one. I have the Knicks in five, oh, okay. and that is because I think they are just the overall better team. And in the end, uh, defense wins, I guess, championships, but defense wins in the playoffs. I'll put yeah. it that way. I'm not saying they're going to win the championship, but you have to win each round in order to get to that that level obviously so defense wins in the in the playoffs i just think they're too stifling and halliburton still is hamstring granted they got past the bucks but without damian lillard and without Giannis. Yeah. and i think his hamstring is it's hard you don't just recover in two weeks by sitting on the bench from a hamstring injury and then go play again you know so no, we'll see we'll see but i got nixon five i think thibodeau is is doing something it's doing something doing it without that big name or at least not multiple big names yeah well i mean that's again you talked about playing defense as a team and that's like Thibodeau's whole thing is defense I mean it's part of the reason the Celtics even won the title in 08 he was their like defensive coordinator at that time so oh, okay got you oh, now I dislike him oh, cool. <laughs> perfect I didn't even know that to be honest with you so get out of my face Tom Thibodeau go Pacers woo all right uh, all right so let's get to that other team that you just mentioned that I'd rather not say and their series with the Cavaliers 
Uh, I kind of have a feeling we're both going with it because yeah, the season two got good. But please entertain me. <laughs> no, it's it's gonna be Celtics in five. I think the Cavs, the fact that they had to go seven against a really young Orlando team, and the Celtics were able to get over in five, and, and not. Now, we don't know when Kristaps Porzingis is going to be back, so that's going to affect them overall. But they've been sitting there waiting and resting, and now Cleveland's got to travel to Boston for game one. I don't think they're going to be ready from a quick turnaround from Sunday to Tuesday, and I think Boston's going to take advantage of having those extra couple days of rest, and I, I think they're going to beat them pretty easily in five. Cleveland will skill one at home, maybe game three. It might even be game four when they're down 3-0 and Boston takes Like we were. Ass. Uh, yeah, exactly. The same thing as yeah. the Lakers-Nuggets series. But I think ultimately yeah. once they get back to Boston, they'll take care of it in five. Yeah, I'm literally on with you, Celtics, unfortunately. I don't even like saying it, and I have it in the same amount of games, five. I'm giving the Cavs one because they are a really good team. But when you when you struggle to beat Orlando, and that's not even a knock on Orlando. It's no, to your point. It's, it's, the, it's the, the scale and the levels here. Orlando's a, a playoff-ready team, and they proved it this year. But Boston's a championship-ready team. Yep. So there's just different tiers to, to, to good in the NBA. My question to you, Corey, is do you think anybody on the Boston Celtics watched – Game seven of that Cavs series, and might have heard all of those fans saying, yeah. "We want Boston." Yeah. Okay, well, you got what you asked for, Cleveland. I hate, I hate when fans and 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 players do that, where they talk shit before a series even gets started. Because I feel like you're just giving the other team bulletin board material, which always seems to come back to haunt you. So, like, don't talk or say anything about an opponent until you've beaten them and gone past them in a series. Then talk all the shit you want, but don't do it preemptively or in the middle of the series. Always, mad. yeah, especially when you're gigantic underdogs Did you see the betting line for that oh, series and imagine it's good <laughs> minus 1600 oh, for the oh. celtics to win yes you have to bet one thousand six hundred dollars to win one hundred dollars that's how almost guaranteed this uh, it's plus 840 so a hundred dollar bet on the Cavs if they win wins you almost a grand that's how much wow. it's lop. That's how lopsided it is. For context, most series, if they're close, like the uh, like probably this Wolves. Well, the Wolves Nuggets before the first two games, that was probably like in the plus two hundreds, plus three hundred, minus three, like that. So minus sixteen hundred and plus nine hundred is just insane. So good luck, Cleveland. You got what you asked for. Yeah, good luck for real. This is the most interesting one though, dude, and the one I'm just like, well, I hate to say it again, really interested in. Wolves Nuggets. Uh, obviously, we got our ass beat again two years in a row. Uh, they're not our daddy. I don't care what they say. They have only one championship, and they are still 16 behind. So, Very true. with that being said, how's the series going, though, bro? I, As much as I would love to lose to the future champions like yeah. we did last year, I'd love to see Denver lose the way they talk shit this year, bro. Get out of my face. Yeah, well, the game is officially over of game two, and they lost by the Nuggets lost by 26, and that's without Rudy Gobert for the Wolves. And, you know, before the series started, I kind of thought, like, okay, maybe this will go long, and, like, Denver I thought I was gonna sneak it out in seven. But then I watched game one on Saturday, and I was like, hmm. This Minnesota team has like a lot of answers for Jokic because they have so many big guys. You have Gobert, then you have Towns, and you have Nas Reed. Like you have three different style of big men that can kind of throw mm -hmm. at him and make him really work for it. Um, Anthony Edwards is just a beast and a baller right now. He's been I love that great. guy. Um, and then I saw a clip of Dwight Howard. Uh, I don't know if he's on a podcast or just talking about on Twitter, but he compared this Minnesota team to the Lakers 2020 team that he was a part of because it was the same concept they had. Anthony Davis, JaVale McGee, and Dwight Howard. You had three different types of bigs to throw at Jokic and make him work. You had LeBron, who, like Anthony Edwards, was doing anything he wanted on offense at that time. And True. then you had some role three and D guys, like Danny Green that year was really good on defensively. KCP was really good. And then you had old man, three, old man Rondo on the on the, the point guard. Like Conley. And exactly. Minnesota has ah. Alexander Walker and McDaniels as the three and D guys. Like, it's a very similar team, but they're also much younger and much, like, I don't know. They're ready to go because after this game, when they won by 26, I mean, they're up by 30 at some point in this game early. And again, go bears back in Minnesota because his uh, girlfriend had their first kid today. So game three in Minnesota, you're up two nothing. You're going home. You're got to be feeling real good about the series. So initially I was thinking seven for Denver, but now I'm kind of thinking Minnesota and six best day ever for Rudy Gobert. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, you get your freaking kid in the world and you didn't even have to play and you win by 30 and you're coming back to Minnesota with a two. Bro, right. best day ever. Right. Oh my gosh. With a chance to get to the conference finals. Dude, that's crazy, dude. I, I'm super pumped for the Wolves. I really like Anthony Edwards. Uh, like we've talked about it. Um, I, I have them winning this actually as well. I, I thought that they would have a really good chance. I had Nuggets in seven 
when we built out, like I built my own like bracket out to try to like work all the way through to the finals. I had them playing each other and I had nuggets in seven because I knew that the Timberwolves was going to be good, but I just thought that championship compet- you know, you're going to be at home game seven. They'll sneak one out. Well, shit, bro. Not, they, I don't know if they'll win a game in this I, series, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm giving them two because they're the champs. They're going to fight for it. But yeah, if Minnesota gets a three Oh hold on, I don't know when the next game is says Monday. So probably Wednesday, like this series. Can- oh, no, 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 no. They're probably like Thursday. Oh, yeah. They're already yeah. two. They've already played two. There's two series. that haven't even started. Right. They need yeah, two they off to travel. But anyways, they, this game, this series could be over by Saturday or Sunday in four games, the way this is going. Cause I mean, Murray did not look like himself. Reggie Jackson left the game late in the fourth with his ankle again. Uh, Murray looks not only not like himself, but also was very frustrated tonight. And the defense for the Timberwolves is in suffocating and, and just making them, you know, I, I guess they're just not used to being pushed around like this if you're Denver and it's it's showing. Good, bitch. <laughs> um, I mean, darn, good luck. No, so to, 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 to add to that, this is kind of what I was thinking, man. Because because they have the Lakers in their brain so much, yep. that was their pinnacle last year. They got to walk through the finals against a hobbled Heat team uh, with just Jimmy Butler, and then they made it a point that obviously we're playing them first. They they put everything, bro, because we played well. The Lakers played well. We led for ninety percent of the damn games. Yeah, it was kind of it was just at the end, so they were barely squeaking out against us. But they put everything into that series. And I think they're freaking exhausted, dude. I literally think that they've put so much effort and emphasis into beating the Lakers in just round one, bro. Just round one, that they've run out of gas already. Well, not and because, only- and they've come up against a team that is young, hungry, and 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 going for it. Yeah, and not only that, I mean, it's hard to go back to back. The war of attrition has obviously come on to Denver because even Murray hasn't really been himself the last half of the season. Now Reggie mm-hmm. Jackson's hurt. KCP's kind of been in and out of the lineup and like kind of tweaked here and there. They're just not. They don't have the depth without Bruce Brown uh, Jr. and Je- and Jeff Green last year, and it's starting to show. And now, I mean, Minnesota's ready. I think this is their moment. Well, let's think about the the to, to add to that point. Let's think about the recent previous uh, back to backs. Okay, so you got the Warriors, mm-hmm. which was a freaking super team with Kevin Durant. Yep. Before that, you have the Heat. Which is a freaking super team with LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosch, and all those players. And Eric Spolstra that now we see is arguably the smartest coach in the entire league. Yep. I, no, I'm not trying to be rude, Pop or Kerr. Okay. Yeah. Just, no, I got you. Um and and then the Kobe Kobe Powell Lakers. Yep. And that's just Kobe Bryant, bro. That's just Kobe Bryant being Kobe Bryant. You know what I'm saying? So and, and Phil. Yeah, obviously. that wasn't a so, super team. Like Powell was great, Lamar was great, like Bynum had some moments and then they had Reza the first time and Artessa the second. Like they had role players, far more good players. Brown, but that was not a super team by any means. No, these other no. Players. So, I mean, it's few and far between that teams even do this in general. So, yeah, it's definitely hard. Uh, and I think that they gave it all to, to the Lakers. So they lost it all here to Minnesota. Apparently. Bye. The, for me, the former home of the Lakers in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, we still own that place, bro. You know, we got more championships in Minneapolis than you do. <laughs> Anyways, all right, let's move on to the last one. Let's wrap this one up. We've got the Thunder taking on the Mavericks, oh. which is great for me because now all I'm rooting for is a West Coast team. No Celtics, and other than that, I really don't care, to be honest yeah. with you. I just don't care. Not- so Thunder Mavs, uh, surprising, you know, how easily. Now, granted, they were zion and Brandon Ingram's hobbled, but gosh, they beat the shit out of the freaking Pelicans. Yeah, they really Thunder did. great. Yeah, and SGA is legit. I mean, Lou Dort, uh, Jalen Williams, either one of them, because there's two of them. Uh, Chet Holmgren's really good. Like, they just, they have a, they've built a really good thing there in OKC. It's taken them a long time with all the draft picks they took to get here, but it has finally come to fruition, and Man, I don't know. I wanted I wanted to pick Dallas because I'm I'm kind of a big Luca guy. I really like Luca and Kyrie's been really good. But it's I think fact. losing Maxi Kleber uh to the shoulder injury after that series against the Clippers is gonna hurt them a little bit. Um I just I know OKC's young, but like Dallas isn't like the most experienced team. Either. They've been to one conference finals and that was Luca prior to Kyrie getting there and and Gafford and all these other guys that they brought in. So they have a lot of young guys too. I just think that OKC's been resting and i mean luca even said after game six in the clipper series like i'm tired he's like well it's the first round bro we got another three to go if you're gonna win the whole thing so i feel like he might they might run out of gas a little bit here and okc's a little younger and i think they're just ready to go i think it's gonna be okc in seven i don't think it's gonna be an easy seven games but i feel like they can sneak this out and get an okc minnesota western conference final whoa that's so weird (laughs) so weird 
Um, okay, so I, I think this is going to where we're different. That works out. So we're we're both all, we're all aligned on the other three: Knicks, Celtics, Wolves. Uh, this is the one where we differ. You're going Thunder. I'm going to take the Mavs. I think what they showed against the Clippers. Now, granted, the Clippers aren't great, uh, but there's a reason why they were as dominant as they were by leading most games that they won by 20 plus uh, sure. e- almost each time, and it's because of their defense. That's the craziest part is because when you think of the Mavericks and Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving and Tim Hardaway Jr., the last I know he's hurt, but yeah. the last thing you're thinking is offense, or the last thing you're thinking is defense. You're only thinking offense. Thanks. But they were like one of the top rated teams in uh, defensively over over the, the second half of the NBA season. And they really proved it against the Clippers. They held them really down. So I think Luca might have some magic. That's going to be a freaking insane matchup, bro. Oh. Shea and Luca. I know they probably won't defend each other all the time, no, but really. that's going to be fun just to see them kind of yeah. going at each other. And props where props is due. Kyrie and Luca yeah. have been playing defense. A little bit more Kyrie. Yeah, but, he's been locking people down. But yeah, Luca's doing his part, man. Yeah, he's playing more defense than he ever has for sure. And I mean, that's hundred percent. That's probably why he's tired. <laughs> yeah, well, he's having to play on both sides of the ball a little more. Uh-huh. Yeah, but yeah, no, I'm with you. Kyrie was great in that series, uh, playing defense on Harden and really disrupting him the last couple games of the series. I think Kyrie is finally just all about basketball right now, and there's we're not talking about anything else with him except for basketball, which is a good thing. And I think they're just, you know, they they think like they know that this is their time. If they're going to win in, in Dallas, this is the shot they have. Uh, Jay Kidd's a great coach. Obviously won. That's what I was going to say. With the Lakers in 2020. So he won with the Mavericks as a player in 2011 against the Heat. So he knows what it takes on both sides. Even against all those odds. Because they were not favored against the Heat, obviously. Not at all. That was the first year of the Heatles. They definitely were not. So, yeah, I, I, exactly. feel, I wouldn't be shocked if Dallas won, but I still think it's going to yeah. go seven regardless. Well, that's I, why you think it's going seven. Yeah, yeah I just for some reason teams. think the Thunder will sneak out at home because they're going to have that crazy college-like atmosphere, home home uh, court. And I just, I don't know. I feel like they're just going to sneak over the top somehow. Nice. Okay, well, I'm taking Mavs in six. I don't know if I said the right numbers. I'm taking Mavs in six. And I'm going to go back to the point that you made about the lack of experience for OKC. And kind of with you for the Dallas thing, there's not a ton of players that they're played. But, I mean, Luka, Luka's been on the international stage since he was like freaking 12. Yeah. That's uh, so no stage is too big for him. Kyrie's been to and won a finals before. In fact, he's made arguably the biggest shot. Everybody says he saved LeBron. Yeah. That sure. finals. So yeah. he's been there. And then the last point, which is to what you said, Jason Kidd as the coach. Now, granted, he's not on the floor. But he's been there as a player, so he can relate to the players and what they're trying to feel. Yep. He can't obviously go and do it, but so that's kind of the edge that I'm giving them. To, so, kind of to your point about the lack of experience for OKC, that's really the only thing. And I just don't know if they can go beat them in a game seven at Oklahoma City. To your point, that atmosphere is nuts. That's why I'm saying it's going to happen at six if they, if they if they do win. So. All right, all right. Well, we're not too far um, off on these, but it, yeah, yeah, that's true. So we have uh, pretty much most the same. You have oh yeah, Thunder Mavs are the only ones that we kind of have differently. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I think this is pretty good. We'll check back in, obviously, when this round is over, we're going to predict the conference finals and who, and then kind of go over our predictions here just to kind of make sure, keep you guys updated as well. Um, but let us know down in the comments who you have going into the next round. We want to see where you got, where your mind's at. Maybe let us know what your favorite team is as well. Let us know if you're a homer or if you're just picking with your your mind. Maybe you're going to be like Corey and pick with your heart and say Lakers are going to yeah. lose in seven. Maybe you're going to pick like me and pick with your mind and say Lakers are going to get swept. <laughs> we were both wrong a little bit. I guess we both had the Nuggets winning. But, yeah, let us know down in the comments who you've got moving on to the conference finals for each of them. And make sure you check back in when we get to the finals one. Let us know who you've got doing that one as well. So uh, appreciate everybody stopping by. Thank you, as always, for seeing things from RV from the bench. I'm Brendan. And I'm Corey. Like we always say, enjoy the sports until we talk again. Peace. This was a Sycamore 4th Studios production.